We knew we wanted to do real estate. We heard enough about it, passive income, you know, its ability to kind of weather market changes. And so one night in uh, late at night, you know, scrolling, uh, in bed scrolling while he's asleep, uh, I come across uh, Pollock's Open Spaces um, five day challenge. And so I'm like, all right, I'll do it. It's free. Um, do the five days. And I just loved Pollock. She seemed authentic. Um, you know, kind of helped me focus in on what we really wanted, our goals. And so I, I went through the five days and I'm, I'm like, hey, Randy, I, I think we need to check this out. Hey, this is Neeti. And what you're about to hear today is a very special episode with one of the members from our portfolio program. We call these Sensei Sessions. These interviews are designed to give you a perspective about what you can achieve with the right strategies and execution. I hope you enjoy this episode and for free resources, check out our show notes section to see how you can build and scale your portfolio. Million Dollar Club Sensei panels. This one is uh, extra special. They're all special, but this one is extra special. These investors have crossed the million dollar mark in their portfolio. And it's really been so much fun to watch their journey. So Anne and Randy, let's just start with you. Who are you? What do you do now? And where do you invest? Uh, we're in and Randy Batts from uh, Southwest Michigan, Kalamazoo. So um, we've uh, been in the program for about 18 months. Uh, we've been married for 32 years. We have four adult children and one three-year-old grandbaby. And uh, I used to be a business owner. I owned a credit reporting agency for about 20 years and sold it just a couple of years ago. And yeah. Yep. And I've done a whole bunch of stuff. Stay-at-home mom, uh, pastor at a large church, accounting manager, looking for a manufacturing company, all things that have prepared me for real estate. Where do you invest? Uh, Fort Wayne, Indiana, primarily, although we have bought properties in Delaware and Arizona as well. Can you walk us through your mission, the mission of your real estate business? Stewardship is really important to Randy and I. You know, we believe that um, there's a higher plan and purpose for our lives. And we've been given gifts and talents. And those gifts and talents are meant not just for us, but to, you know, to accomplish what we were created for. So, you know, our purpose is to make money and we like to be generous. We like to um, sow into good causes and that's extremely important to us. And, you know, I, I don't mean for this to sound like we're all these goody two shoes, but it's super important to us to be good stewards of the time, the talents and the money that we have been given. And yeah, we like things, you know, we like to, to have a comfortable lifestyle, but the most fulfilling thing for us, honestly, is just to help, whether it's family or good causes. We have a local school that, you know, serves kind of the um, at-risk children. I could just cry thinking about that, you know, that, that school and what they do. So honestly, again, when I die, I want to know I impacted people. Um, I don't need stuff. I'm sorry, I'm getting emotional. I don't need stuff, but I want to know that we've helped people. Okay, you're going to make a lot of us tear up. Thank you. So first of all, how did you find the Portfolio Mastery community? How did you find this group and understand that it was going to be the thing that catapulted you to where you are today? So I, I had spent, I mentioned before, a year and a half looking for a manufacturing company to own and operate. Um, throughout that process and towards the end of that year and a half, I realized, you know what, if I do this, I'm just going to be creating really another job for myself with more pressure. I'm going to be subject to the board of directors. I'm really not going to be able to do everything that I want to do. And, and I'm like, man, I'm like, I'm like early fifties. Do I want to, do I want to do this? And so shortly after that, when I'm like, I don't think I want to do this. Um, Randy sold his company and we're like, great. We, we both, you know, are looking for something. We knew we wanted to do real estate. We heard enough about it, passive income, you know, its ability to kind of weather market changes. And so one night in, uh, late at night, you know, scrolling, uh, in bed scrolling while he's asleep, uh, I come across, uh, Pollock's open spaces, um, five day challenge. And so I'm like, all right, I'll do it. It's free. Um, do the five days. And I just loved 
alcoholic, but she seemed authentic. Um, you know, it kind of helped me focus in on what we really wanted, our goals. And so I, I went through the five days and I'm, I'm like, hey, Randy, I, I think we need to check this out. And Randy has um, a little bit of a pessimistic gene he gets from his dad. And so he was like skeptical, but he's like, all right. And so we met with Aviv like someone else did. And, you know, we were kind of waiting for the high pressure sales thing at the end. And uh, Aviv was just great. OK, well, you know, think about it. Let me know. And I knew I'm like, I want to do this. You know, we didn't want to recreate the wheel. We we're in our 50s. We wanted to work smart and not harder. And so we wanted to find a program that we could learn from, we could mitigate our mistakes, and we could move fast. Uh, and we didn't want it to be high pressure sales and trying to get us, you know, to join. And like I said, Pollock was authentic. And so we made the decision to do it and are so, so thankful we did. But first of all, I want to get your ARVs, <laughs> your portfolio size, uh, and get an idea of what you have amassed over the year or so that you've been with us. Sure. Uh, so we, we've always done a little bit of a hybrid. We, we do flips as well as burrs. We focus on burrs, but if the numbers don't work and we can, we can make it work as a flip, we do that. Um, we have done uh, just over 2 million in flips. And we sit at three million in Burr rentals currently. Holy moly! Did did you think this was possible? And good question. I mean, you know, I always have high goals, but I I don't I don't I don't know if we realized. I don't think we realized we could do this much in eighteen months. Yeah. And so then, what would you say? And I, you know, I imagine it's changed over the last year or so. But what are some of your biggest Aha's transformations as you have grown your portfolio. No, I, I think the biggest one right out of the gate was just the the knowledge transfer. Um, so it you know you, you can get anywhere in the country as long as you've got a map on how to get there. Um, and so you know that that's what the program brought to us was a roadmap um, and a proven roadmap. You know it's one thing to sell a program. Uh, it's another one to have a whole bunch of success and, and uh, people who have done it that are sitting right in front of me that I can talk to. Uh, and so it was the knowledge transfer and then having the confidence in the knowledge to go ahead. And, and, and then the, the second transformation, I would say, is um, uh, it's one thing to say that we buy real estate. It's a different thing to say we are real estate investors. Um, there's, it, it's an entirely different mindset. And then, you know, we, uh, because of this program, I feel like made that transition early on. Um, and, and it's because we had trust and confidence in the roadmap. Mm -hmm. Oh, so you didn't think of yourselves as investors in the very big, well, maybe you did. So when, when did the investor, uh, nickname or name stick, would you say? I say we faked it at first. You know, and it, it was, it was a bit of a process, but you know, when you're both not working, you know, and everyone asks, Hey, what do you do? I would say maybe, you know, after buying the first one, and even as we were betting uh, contractors in our team, we needed to sound like we knew what we were doing. We needed to sound like the real deal. We needed to sound professional. So we started saying we're real estate investors when we didn't feel like it or when we didn't feel like we were real real estate investors, we said it before we felt it. And mm -hmm. then all of a sudden you realize we are real estate investors. We don't even have to think about it or feel like we're faking it. Like we're legit. Uh, and that's really kind of a cool feeling. Can you talk a little bit about some of the things that you do that have helped you grow your portfolio, but that you maybe look at it differently than other people? I think it's fair to say we're not um, incompetent people. I mean, we, we've done a lot in our lives, been successful. Um, we entered into the program, though, with a knowledge deficit. So we felt very incompetent. Uh, we didn't even know what we didn't know. Um, and so it's that it's making that transition to learning, OK, there's there's a lot more to this. And then you start taking those those bites away and then you you become, a you know, that that whole idea of being a conscious competent where you you know everything or, you know, as much as you can know and you continue to strive to know more. Uh, it was knowing to do that 
from our previous lives. It was knowing that we've got to figure out how we make that movement from being an unconscious incompetent to being a conscious competent um, that, that drove us to then to start to devour the information. So was there like a tipping point where you're like, okay, we're getting serious? I feel like we were honestly pretty serious from the start. And, you know, we're a little different from some people because we didn't have W-2s. So um, we we moved fast. Yeah, we had a deal within the first four or five weeks. We added, we did five deals the first year. But um, we had to, honestly, we had to take this seriously because we had a lot of money going out the door and we needed to get these places renovated and rented and we had problems. And you can't just put your head in the sand and pretend like this is a hobby. We needed to address these problems head on, um, save our money, save our situation and overcome them and, and keep moving forward. So we had to be serious and professional right away. How did you decide on your market? I think one of the more determining factors for us, we like to be a little more hands-on. So we wanted something close. Uh, and so we used that methodology of finding areas where there are homes that fit the numbers um, in great quantities or greater quantities, um, and that were within a certain drivable radius. And so that's how we ended up in Fort Wayne, Indiana. It's a two hour drive for us one way. And uh, so that's the short and sweet of it. Got it. Okay. Could it, how did you find your first deal? Uh, the MLS. So MLS. Yeah. I mean, we, we, uh, you know, we had a, a found a great realtor. Um, you know, we're at a church thing. Randy gets talk. He talks to everyone. So he got talking to someone who ended up being from Fort Wayne, Indiana. You know, we knew we were considering investing there. She happened to have a twin sister that was a realtor. And so Cassie, our realtor just you know, started feeding us deals. We went down there, walked through some. Uh, most of them are MLS. We have done some uh, off-market deals. Yeah. Got it. And your portfolio is over 3 million, right? Did I get that right? Yes. That's over 3 million, yep. So you've done over 3 million in deals in such a short period of time with majority of them being from the MLS. That's That's really amazing. So initially, how did you find your team members? Yeah, lot, j just honestly, a lot of due diligence, uh, mm -hmm. a lot of due diligence, and then a lot of um, networking. So, you know, we started with a realtor. All right, Cassie, um, you know, you got contractors down there. You know, can you ask around your realtor, realtor friends? Yeah. Uh, help us out with contractors. We joined all the, the local uh, investment Facebook groups. And then once we've got our list, yeah, I mean, I'm asking questions. We're checking references. We're doing phone interviews. Um, I always prefer to have, you know, like a, a, a some kind of personal referral or recommendation. Um, but, you know, you can't always get that. So just a lot of a lot of legwork, a lot of asking questions and, and due diligence. What would you say to someone to get them moving to that next level? I think it's the tired old adage, but, you know, the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. And so, you know, it, it comes back to you've got to have your why that is more powerful than the pain of taking that first step or that next step. So I would say get back to your why if you're stuck on, on, on where you're at, um, if that makes sense. I love it. And we appreciate all of your time, your energy, your effort. Thank you for sharing your wisdom and giving us your time and energy. We'll see you guys we next week. Next week. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye. When you're ready to get serious, you can join us at theinvestoraccelerator.com. It's like getting a thousand episodes worth of information in five days. And it's everything you need to build your actionable plan to financial freedom and making work optional.